In this video, I'm going to go over unions in C. So unions allow us to create a special type of user-defined data type. And they look a lot like structs in terms of how they seem to work and how they seem to behave. But there's one very important difference. So first, I'll define a union. Here I'll say union data int x double y car z and we'll make a 32 character length character array called z. So here we've defined a new union data type called data, and it has three members, x, y, and z. Now the big difference between a union and a struct, because so far this looks a lot like a struct, is that a union only has enough space to store one of the members. So I'll try to show you how this works with an example. I'm going to include string.h, just so I can use the string copy function to set z. So here I'll make a union. I'll say union data my data, and then I'll set the members. So I'll say my data, and we say dot x is equal to 10 to set the members, just like we do with structs. And I'll say my data dot y is equal to 20.5. Then I'll use a string copy to set my data dot z to test one, two, three. And then I'll try printing out the values stored in these members. So I'll say printf my data dot x is equal to percent d slash n, and I'll output my data dot x, printf my data dot y is equal to percent f slash n, and I'll output my data dot y, and then printf my data dot z is equal to percent s slash n, and I'll output my data dot z. So if I save this and run this, the result might be surprising. I forgot a semicolon there, so I'll fix that. So the result might be surprising here, because look at my data.x. It looks like garbage. My data.y looks like zero. And only my data.z actually has what we expected stored into it. So what's going on here is the key difference between how a union works and how a struct works. With a union, we only have enough space to store one of these things at a time. And they actually all occupy the same space in memory. So when I actually copied in this string test123 into my data.z, this actually overwrote the 20.5 that was previously stored in that same spot in memory as a double value. And we set my data.y equal to 20.5, that overwrote what was previously stored in memory at the same location when we set the member x to 10, because they all occupy the same space in memory. So if I were to set one of these individually and then print it out, it would work fine. So here if I said my data.x is equal to 10, and then I did a printf of my data.x, it'll be okay. Then after that, I'll set my data.y equal to 20.5, and then I'll printf my data.y, and then finally, I'll string copy test123 into my data.z. And then I'll print f my data.z. And this should all work okay now. So if I run this version here, you'll see that we actually do get them printed out okay. So now we get my data.x is 10, my data.y is 20.5, and my data.z is test123. So with a union, we can only use one of the members at a time because all of the members occupy the same space in memory. And if we set one of them, we're going to be effectively overwriting the other one. Now, because they all occupy the same space in memory, the space that it takes to store a union is going to be the size of the largest member in the union. And in this case here, that's going to be the character array, Z, that stores 32 characters. So here we'll print it out. We'll say printf my data size percent d slash n, and we'll output the size of my data. And if we save this here and run it, we get that my data has a size of 32. And that's because we need 32 bytes to store those 32 characters of the z character array. So if I say here printf, car size percent d slash n 
and I do size of car, we're going to find that it takes one byte to store a character. So that's why my data as a whole takes up 32 bytes because this character array Z is 32 characters long, one byte per character, leaves us with 32 bytes required to store any one of these members. Now a double and an int will take up less than 32 bytes, but that doesn't matter because you potentially have to store a 32 character array as part of this union, it doesn't matter that these take up less space. The whole thing still has to occupy 32 bytes of memory. So why we would use unions is basically because we could save space. So if we only have to store one thing at a time, but we know it's going to be one of several things, we could create a union of those things, knowing that only one of those is going to be in use at any given time, thus taking up less memory than if we had a struct where a struct is going to go out and create space for all of those things. So here, if I said struct data two int x double y car z32, and then down here, I say struct data two, my data two, and we do a printf of my data two size percent d slash n and we output size of my data two, we're gonna find that it's more than 32. Forgot a semicolon there, but we're gonna find out that it's more than 32. It's gonna be 48, because in addition to storing the 32 characters, we've also gotta store an int and a double. So next up, let's talk about pointers to unions. So pointers to unions work a lot like pointers to structs. So here if I said union data star pointer is equal to and my data, what I have here is a pointer to a union and I've set it equal to the memory address of my data. If I want to access the members of my data, I can do so using the arrow notation just like I do with a struct. So I could say printf pointer z is equal to percent s slash n, and I can access the member variables of the union being pointed to by this pointer by saying pointer arrow z. So this here is the arrow notation, and it allows us to get at the members, in this case z, of the union that the pointer is pointing to, in this case my data. So if I run this, we should get a printout of test one, two, three, because that's what the pointer is pointing to in terms of what the union is storing there. So because unions typically only store useful data for one member at a time, we really need to know which member is active, like which one is really being used. And so a common pattern is to see a struct wrap a union in the sense of having it as a member. And the struct can include a member that signifies which of the union members is actually being used. So for example, up here, we could say type def struct, and we'll say int type union, and we'll say car x 1024, float y 1024, and double z 1024, and we'll call this union buffer. And we'll call this type def of a struct here info. So what I've got here is a union inside of a struct. And it's a member of that struct called buffer here. With this type member, what I could do is set values that signify which union member is actively in use. So maybe type 0 could signify that x is in use type one could signify that Y is in use and type two could signify that Z is in use. So we could then do things like this. We could say info info and then we could say info dot type is equal to zero to signify that the X member of the union is what's in use. And then we'll say memset info dot buffer dot X set it to be all T's 
for 1,024 characters. And then we can do checks. And we could check to see which member is in use before doing certain things. So we could say like, if the info.type is zero, then we know that the X member is in use. And we know, for example, that we could print out the characters in that buffer. So here we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 1024, i plus plus. And we'll just print out all the characters in the buffer. So we'll say printf info.buffer dot x percent d is equal to percent c slash n and we'll output i and info dot buffer dot x at i so if we save this and run it we should just print out all those t's in that x member of the buffer union but if for example the info dot type was set to one we'd be signifying that maybe the y member is in use and then if we run this we're never going to print out the buffer values of the X member because the info type is not zero. So we could use this type member of the struct to keep track of which of the union members is actually in use and then do or not do things based on what's in that union. So this is how unions work in C. We would typically use them in situations where memory is constrained like for example, inside embedded systems. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.